Hi guys and welcome back to Art Alec Heart and this is my Friday vlog. So in this vlog I wanted to give you an update on this book here. Boom! You guys might remember this from a review I did um, several months ago on sketchbooks. I think it was maybe October of last year and I had purchased this sketchbook. Well I have since finished this sketchbook and filled it. I thought I would show you some of the pictures that are inside. So this is my sketchbook and again if you want to find out a little bit more where I got it and all that I will put a link to that uh, review in the description box below. So let's open it up and take a step back in my art past. This sketchbook is going to flip in all directions just depending on whether I felt comfortable with the spiral bind next to my wrist or away from my wrist. The beginning of the sketchbook I find probably the hardest. I was trying to figure out what the sketchbook was, what I wanted to do with it, um, and so it took me a couple pages to get into it. Um, I started this on our trip down to California in October of last year and we took a train and so these are some of the sites that I saw some of the passengers this was actually a mom I saw on the train with her little kid sleeping on top of her <laughs> then as we got closer to California I began to see these amazing trees so I had to sketch one there so I have some random like animal sketches here and then began just sketching people I don't know that I was looking at any people yet. I was just still kind of sketching from my head. This sketch here was actually a lady sitting on the observation deck car on the train and I drew her, kind of cartooned her up a little bit there and then decided to draw some concept art for possible dragon tutorials later on. I don't think this guy ever made it to a tutorial. I think when I was drawing him then after that shortly I came up with a leaf dragon and went with him instead but this was an ice dragon I think it was. And I was trying to blend a couple different animal features together with him. This page is just um, some quick sketch scribbles of Disney princesses as kids. So there's uh, Merida and Mulan. And then this one was kind of fun. I was just working on some sketches for some owls. And so I had this owl in flight and then did kind of a up close sketch of an owl, kind of the half of the owl face, and then there's another owl face here. So it's nothing like a finished sketch, it was just kind of a study. And you'll see I'm doing these in color pencil. I found that when I did work in graphite pencils, like a regular art pencil, that it tended to smudge or smear a lot. But when I would draw with color pencil, um, it wouldn't smear as much. I, mean, I think I can probably smudge it a little bit, but not so bad. And then shortly after that, I moved to getting one of these, which is a, a Prismacolor color race uh, color pencil that's men meant for sketching. It comes with an eraser on one end. And I got a whole package of these off of Amazon and found that these are probably now one of my favorite things to do initial sketches with. This is one that you guys probably would recognize. This came from my Crayola color pencil challenge. And so I did this rose. I did a time lapse of this video. So if you want to see that, you can check back through my video archives. I'll have a video of that posted. And then this is just a picture I did, a study of a dog. And I was just kind of trying to see what I could get with the eyes. Um, and I wrote some notes about that later on. So this is a pencil sketch that I put a base color of watercolor and then went over a little bit with color pencils for the hair. So I did color pencil work of a certain Sailor Scout that you may know and love. Fun fact, Sailor Moon was the first anime that I ever watched. So yeah, she started it all. Then I did this sketch. So this is a kind of a cartoony, stylized, very bright and colorful picture of Ariel. And then vastly changing topics, kind of did this very moody uh, picture with, uh, I don't think there's any watercolor in here. I think this is all color pencils in this part. And then this is Indian black ink. And I don't know, I kind of think she's like a ghost or something. I don't know. Which is dark and moody. And I don't generally do dark and moody, but it was kind of fun. And I was going to start a doodle here, but that's as far as I doodled. And some sketches of some ponies. Another sketch and notes. And this is Catbug. He's uh, from a cartoon series that actually is based here on YouTube. Oh. Also another cartoon based on YouTube, which is Puppy Cat. Yay! 
and then we have Princess Jasmine, which is not the Sony tube. And then this one's interesting. This is a initial pencil sketch up. I wanted to do a picture of Elphaba, and so I was just kind of sketching her up. But I just didn't like the pose, and I kind of reworked it a couple times until I was starting to kind of wear the paper out. So I went ahead and did something I normally don't do, which is I didn't give up on the drawing, but I decided to just start over clean and take it from there and went with this one, which I, at the time, ended up liking and actually finished coloring. And I love the coloring on this, so it's awesome. But I actually like the idea of this sketch better. There's more emotion in it. There's more movement in it. This one's very statuesque for this drawing. So even though I ultimately went with this one to color, I might go back to visit this one someday, or at least relook at it and recreate it, but yeah. And then this course, this is um, Elsa, how to draw a cartoon Elsa that I did a video for. Random faces. So these really aren't anyone in particular, even though that one really looks like Ariel to me. I was just trying out some different styles and hairdos and yeah. And then this is a whole page of just cartoon eyes. I just wanted to see how many cartoon eyes, different cartoon eyes, I could draw different styles on this page. And so I got a, quite a few of them done. Some of them are based on cartoon characters. Some of them are just ones that I came out in my head. Um, yeah, it's fun. I really like these ones. I think these ones look like Yzma from The Emperor's New Groove. Then this one kind of started off as a study very similar to a picture like this, where I'm just randomly putting people in. And what I did is I would just draw one character, sketch her in, and then draw a different character. And then I started trying to fit them together in like a puzzle. Um, I thought, well, that's going to be fun, you know, not having them really interact with each other, but just kind of fit together. And I think this one didn't really fit too well. I think I could have turned her a little bit, but I like how these three kind of fit. Then after I finished drawing them in, I thought, well, let's just ink them in for fun. And then after I inked them in, I thought, well, let's just color them in. And I just kept going until it turned into this. And I thought, Kind of pretty. I like it. I like her. This is a study of kind of motion. So of a girl with a hood and she raises the hood up over her face and kind of turns to a leaf. Trying just to, this is be where I'm beginning to really think I need to work on like getting more fluid motion in my drawings. This one turned out really colorful. I actually ended up coloring her with just highlighter markers, like super cheap ones that you buy to highlight in books. And I think I got a pack of them at the Dollar Tree for like, you know, a, well, a buck because it's Dollar Tree, but there was just like, you know, some random colors. And so I thought, I'll just color her with that. And I don't know, I like it. It's kind of like this fun pops of color. And then it's just some random face sketches. Again, just working on that. I don't, I don't feel super comfortable doing characters of people. Um, I kind of had a bad experience the first time I ever tried doing it when I was a young teenager and it kind of scared me from ever wanting to try it again. So I, I always like, uh, people ask me, draw a picture of me or draw a character or a cartoon of me. And I'm just like, no, I'm beginning to slowly push myself. I've got lots of encouragement from a few of my YouTube art friends. Um, who do this and if you're interested in cartoon character drawings or just looking at people being able to draw them and you just want some encouragement really suggest that you check out my friend Will Terrell's uh, channel he does some amazing character works but quite often he will do um, live streams where he and some of his art friends will join together and they'll just pick a person and start drawing and they do it just real time live on YouTube and it's fun because you can go and find the picture that they are drawing and draw along with them and then you know, kind of compare notes and see what theirs look like and what yours look like. It's just fun. I like doing that. Some more right there. So this was one of them that they were doing. And um, even though his name says Walter, his actually name was Melvin. I was just so wrapped up in drawing him that I thought his name was Walter instead. And so I drew this one first. And I was super excited. I'm like, yeah, that's awesome. And I thought, let's try it one more time but change it up a little bit and try drawing it in a different method. Don't just go for this style. So I did kind of the bubble head style and worked with that a little bit. And I thought, let's just do that one more time. And so same person, but in three totally different styles. And I really ended up liking this one. This one, I think I pushed myself the hardest 
to kind of create something that is a, not the normal flow that I usually go with art. This, this is my really intricate detailed picture of a blizzard. So you guys might remember these little eyeballs. These were from my How to Draw an Eyeball um, tutorial that I did. Um, and so I did that one on there. So I practiced one and then and drew one for this tutorial. And then I decided to kind of come up with a little cartoon character cat. Not for any reason other than it's just fun to create a character and push yourself to kind of give a personality and a style to it. So this is Mochi the cat. And I have no plans for Mochi except for this page. So while after I did the eye, I decided to do um, lips. So before I actually taught the lips, I did several pictures where I kind of just practiced them out. So these were a couple different practicing. Teeth are so stinking hard to draw. It, there's just this fine line between drawing teeth and making them look realistic and making them look super creepy. So yeah, real challenging there. Again, this is another piece that I drew and I ended up coloring at least this part here with uh, the highlighters and then Indie ink here. So again, pushing myself just to do things that I don't normally do. This one I gave myself a very short amount of time to uh, paint a portrait of a picture that I had of a person. And so lots of really loose wet paint and just went really fast. I think I gave myself like three minutes to do this. And so just blah, 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 as fast as I possibly could. So that's, you know, I like it for, for the time allotted there. It's not my usual way that I paint, but it was a great exercise. So here is a character sketch for a story that is bumbling around in my head. And this, see, it's fun because parts in this sketchbook, I really, you know, push myself to do things that are a little bit more challenging, but then you just go back and you have fun. And that's what I really learned about drawing in a sketchbook is a sketchbook is meant to one, to challenge you and encourage you, but it's also to remind you to have fun in drawing and to draw what you love and to remember why you love to draw. So, you know, I would do some hard studies on things, but then I would come back to the sketchbook and then just create something that was fun. So this is a little flower petal fairy that I drew. My niece was having me read a book about the fairies at Pixie Hollow and all about them and their kinds of clothes and, you know, it's, I don't know what it's called. It's like the Pixie Hollow Encyclopedia or something. It was a very fun book. Beautiful illustrations. So I had to create my own very pretty fairy, fairy gown. Yeah, it's fun. This is also another piece that just kind of is in my head and I'm trying to get it out and absolutely did not capture even a tenth of what I was seeing in my head. But it's, it's here in my sketchbook so that later if I ever get inspired, come back to this to look. But uh, yeah, a lot going on. There's this angel up here, and then there's this really strange purple-haired girl in, in black and red shoes. So this was the first drawing that I did once I got my spectrum markers. Um, and I haven't done a tutorial or a really strong review on them. I did a video where I talked about some different things that I purchased and I showed, um, showed them. Um, I'm still playing around with them, trying to decide my thoughts on them. I have thoughts, but I think my thoughts are based on I just still don't know the medium well enough. So I'm going to keep practicing with it until I, I feel a little bit more confident that I know what I'm talking about. And then here's my fairy on a mushroom. This she was in a video on one of my Color Pencil 101 tutorials um, that I did a couple weeks ago. Not really a tutorial on how to do this, but how to push through when you make a mistake. And uh, yeah, I like how she turned out. So yeah. And another picture that I did using the Spectrum markers. And I actually like that side better than this side. Kind of and then, let's see, this is the last picture in my book. I think there was like a page or two past that, but I decided to finish with this one. And I just sat down and tried to do a self-portrait of myself. And uh, I thought it'd be kind of fun at the end of my sketchbooks to kind of capture what I f see myself looking like um, at that time. So, yeah. I think I gave myself a little bit more hair color than I actually had at the time. I find keeping a sketchbook was so 
um, so good for me to be able to really push myself in my sketchbooks. And like I said, it was something that it reminded me to have fun with art because I, I didn't create these pieces for a purpose, like selling and stuff like that. It was fun. So if you have a sketchbook, I encourage you to be brave and share your sketchbook with others. I would love to see some of the sketches in your sketchbook. If you've never done a sketchbook, I highly recommend. Go down to your local art store and pick up a sketchbook of your very own. And I encourage you to work on it at least once a day. Try to try to put one drawing in every day if you can. Um, if you can do more than that, that's awesome. So there were some days that I could put, you know, five or six drawings in my sketchbook. It's on other days, you know, it was just one and that was lucky. I hope you found this sketchbook video fun. If you did, let me know in the comment section below what your favorite sketch was and if you'd like to see some more sketches. So yeah, I don't know how long it's going to take me to fill this one up. It is, there's a lot of pages in this one, but I do have some fun ones. I finished this one, took me like three days to finish this piece here. And I actually, I didn't record the actual sketching or inking, but I think I have almost all of the coloring recorded. So I probably will do a time-lapse video of that um, for you guys to see, because it was kind of fun. It was labor-intensive, but it was fun. So if you're not a subscriber to this channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button right here so you don't miss out on any future videos. And until next time, God bless you guys, and we'll see you later. Bye-bye.